Big Pinball Podcast. It is episode 133. I am Josh Roop. With me, my co-captain, as always. Scott Larson. And Scott, we've got two awesome guests on today. They're going to be talking to us about their new game, Barry O's Barbecue Challenge. If you want to buy this game, where are you buying it from? I will contact Zach and Nicole Minnie at Flipping Out Pinball. They have always been able to help us out. And if you want that specialty game, they can definitely help you out. And definitely, Barry O's Barbecue Challenge definitely fits the bill for a specialty game. Definitely. So we're, we're going to talk about that today. Awesome. And if you want to see our pretty faces, I keep forgetting to say this at the beginning of the episode, you can join us on YouTube and uh, look at all of us as we smile. See Fix and Steve Bowden. You guys are here joining us from American Pinball. We're excited for this game. Tell us about this game, uh, guys. Tell me, uh, tell me give, what... Give, give us the rundown. Yes. Do you want to do it or do you want me to do it? All right, fine. Go for it, Steve. <laughs> Barry O's Barbecue Challenge is a, a game that I hope is a worthy tribute to Barry's uh, career in design. Absolutely. Uh, that is why you'll see some uh, various call-outs to that in the game. But as far as the game itself, Barry O's Barbecue Challenge, you are... A, uh, a an unknown chef, an unknown challenger at the festival. Okay. It's the greatest festival in the universe. This has barbecue and it has hot rods there. You know, most uh, barbecue play, most barbecue festivals have lots of car shows there. So I really like that mix of having them together. So your goal is to try to basically rule the festival as an unknown challenger and defeat the six stars of barbecue who are on the side of the play field who are, are in these barbecue contests with you. So your goal is to not only defeat them, but while you're doing that, also do some of the do some of the hot rod challenges that are also part of the festival. So you're, you're showing your multitasking abilities and in that way you are basically becoming the master of the festival. Master of cooking, master of hot rods, and then some other things, of, you know, some Easter eggs that might show up that uh, might come in later. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And this is honestly, this is a really cool tribute to a man that that helped guide and direct pinball. Some say that he saved it back in the '80s with Space Shuttle, that design. I mean, he was on the first talking pinball machine, Gorgar. I mean, Barrow's got a, quite the illustrious career over pinball over the last four decades. Um, yeah, it was, yeah it was Space Shuttle. Space, they only, like, like I remind, I can, I, I finally get to remind people of this. I have said it before, but in other interviews, but Space Shuttle was my first game that I ever played in my life. It was Space Shuttle. So having, being as involved as I am in the release of this game it is a really special moment. It's sort of like a, an arc of my life, really, that, that that was my first game that got me into pinball. And now with this game, being able to work with him as much as I did on this and to have this come out the way that it did, it really is a special thing. And I just I hope people enjoy it and can uh, appreciate what we have here. Okay, yeah. so let's uh, let's go through the playfield a little bit because obviously there was a collaboration to take Barry's ideas to bring it into this, but it's not solely. This is a group project, and it's uh, it's well, a it, it's a tribute, isn't it? it? Like you're bringing a lot of Barrio things, but you had to take it to the finish line with extra help. Well, let's let's step back here. Let's let's just rewind a little bit. Okay. To okay. To get the whole the whole picture. Okay. So in August, of, it would have been 20, 21. 21, mm -hmm. uh, We know that Deep Root or Voldemort. And Voldemort's it, yeah. yeah Voldemort, it yes. Imploded. It imploded, <laughs> and Barry had already been in contact with me beforehand. Obviously, Steve was there. Um, Barry had helped me find Sophia Ryan. Who is our you know mechanical engineer and mm -hmm. so Barry called me up and said, Hey David, things are going south, think the company's going down, I need a gig. And uh, he also shared it me at that time that he wasn't feeling well, uh, that he had been battling cancer again and certain things have happened. And I kind of shared this with Josh just a little bit ago that we wrote up the contract, we started the contract in August. And mm -hmm. With Barry, it was me and, and him on the contract where he had a handshake before the contract even started. So he immediately started working with Steve in August okay. on the game design. Um, Barry has always been considered a quick gun, a quick mm -hmm. person with the pencil, and he could bang out a play field really fast. Mark Ritchie always thought it was amazing what, what Barry could put together in a very short period of time. 
Um, the contract was written up, and, in, and at that time, uh, before the contract was finalized, I had said to Barry, why don't we put something in here for your family? And we did. We put it in way before he started that his family would get a royalty, which was different than the whole industry has ever done. So we wrote that up for him, and we put that in. And then the contract was signed by legals, uh, legal team, and everything in January when we made the announcement of him joining American Football. Well, that was the January 2023, right? Jan yeah, January of which year you're talking? 23. That's 20, January, that's, that's January 22. Yeah, so, January so last year, last year, 23. Right. Okay. It's been one year since we did so January 23, we made the announcement, and then, yeah, I know, it's like, it feels like it's 20. Or it's not 22. It may be, it's 22. It has to be 22. Okay, okay. So after we finally got Perry on there, we made the announcement, and after legal signed up all the paperwork, Steve had already been working with him, all right? The game plan and layout was pretty much done. In fact, Barry called me up, and he had just sent over to Zofia the entire Whitewood playfield layout, and Steve had already seen it, and we were going to start making the first Whitewood for him. In fact, I told Barry, this is uh, this is how it went. It was on Friday. I said to Barry, thank you for getting all the paperwork in time. We're going to do this, X, Y, and Z. I said, give me a month or two, because it's going to be you know end of March, April. Let's have you come into the office and put the Whitewood for the first time. He said, that'd be better to be up in Chicago during those periods of time, it's perfect. So that's how we left it. And then literally four days later, his wife called me to tell me he had passed away. Okay. Patients of his cancer. So that took a shock for us. Uh, Steve really doubled down, worked on all the rules, everything that he had already worked with Barry, went through all the notes on Barry, grabbing everything he possibly can that they had already talked about in that whole period of time. Right, well, okay. well in the design phase, when we were talking about this stuff, I already had a bunch of things that we had worked on the initial design part for that first time. Okay. Was, was, was submitted. So I hear the news, I get the call, you know, we have the, I have the moment, I, you know, get stoic, get, you know, <laughs> make sure that you get back, you're at work, you're presentable, you know, to tell people, okay, and then it becomes, okay, try to get everything down that we were going to talk about when he was here on paper because I would just not have been able to live my, with myself if I had forgotten some stuff that we had talked about that wasn't written down. There was a lot already down, but there was literally stuff like in the initial rule set that I had covered in green that people were burying us, were burying us, do not touch this, we must have this, we must do this. In this game, so so, okay. some of that, so some of that was brought well, all of that was brought forward as I was writing it down and making sure I had everything done as the initial plan was going forward. So that's how that worked out. So, okay. but at that but at that point, once I had processed the things I needed to process with what would happen, um, mm -hmm. and I began to work with okay, what do I have here? It became how can I make this a very game. I can make this a, a very true game. Do I have an, do, do I have what what can I use here? You know, we have the space shuttle parts. We have parts we wanted to do with it so so and that's how the, it sort of flipped over into I'm gonna try and make this a very game. <laughs> okay. And pretty much with the team when we lost Barry, it wasn't like it was pretty much within that week. We as a team sat down and said, let's dedicate this to Barry. And that's when Barry O's Barbecue Challenge, we want to call it Barry Osborne's Barbecue Challenge. No, Barry O's Barbecue Challenge just had a great ring to it. And we we're like, this this works. This works for a dedication for a person who, and then Steve and the rest of the team just started working on this. We, we built up the white wood. We flipped it on time, with which we were going to do. We found one problem with it. And uh, Dennis helped out with that. We looked at the design. Barry had the three bank drop targets. Yeah, the three bank was going to be on the right. You notice there's a right okay. one, right? Yeah. So, the, so the attempt, the thought, our thought was, let's see if we can have the three bank lead up into a combo shot into the upper hole, you know? Okay. But the problem is once you, as we learned, once you take out a few of those targets, it gets a little dead up in there. 
where mm-hmm. where certain things aren't as smooth up there. So it came, it came to be a ball trap with the yeah. top uh, drop target was down. And it's like just put this put it in the space shuttle position, please. So for okay. Me, okay, please. It, it's, it's, Let's put it in a spatial position. It, it belongs there. We, it, when, when people see it there, they're gonna recognize why it's there. I mean, never yeah. mind that there's a special on the art. That's that was that's much later. <laughs> but okay, we're gonna recognize why we put it there. It makes sense there. The backhand is there. The sweep is there. So that's why that moved. Absolutely. And Dennis, Dennis did it for yeah. like a couple days. What's Quick. The was that? That are that is a man on the spot with that. I was like, yep. Yep, Dennis, you're right. Yep, I got it. Yeah, you're right. You're right, man. You got it. And, yep. and, and, and from there, it was just small little changes. Not seeing wholesale. The whole game design was there. Uh, we, we brought in the smaller LCD, but really the inserts up in the top, all of that was pretty much locked in already with Barry. We already had stuff pretty much done. Now, small little story about it, we can tell them. The original theme of the story was going to be um, car hop. But we kind of told them that car hop had already been taken, had already been done, and, and it's a little outdated. And it, was, it wasn't that hard to explain about barbecue restaurants and barbecue festivals. Especially since he being in San Antonio and taking me on as well as people to various barbecue places and him cooking up barbecue and he being at his house. Yeah. He being at his house with his family eating some barbecue. So that's. It, it the took, theme is not random, okay? No, no, no. <laughs> it took mm-hmm. me no convincing to get Barry on it. He even said there's more barbecue restaurants here than McDonald's. Right. And he's like, I, I understand it. I understand it. So. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess, well, I guess I don't know what part of the show this would be, but I mean, like, you're talking about the top lanes, right? Yeah. yeah. With the original design, there's four top lanes, right? That's with one row of lights. Now there's two rows of lights. Why? Because I wanted that to be Barracuda. Correct. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh wait, I can make a second row and have the fun thing with Barracuda brought back in, make it a little harder. I like I like Barracuda's top lanes because I can't do them. I really bad yep. at it. So it was really <laughs> exciting to, 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 to play that way. So that's like that's the one thing as far as the transition from the Barry's original design of the one row of lights to two rows. Like it's like that. So, so but as far as um. I mean, yeah, well, well, we showed some of the original designs right. at, well, uh, at uh, Texas. At, but, at Texas. But the yeah. other thing we, we, we basically talked about was is that we, because Steve and I both love Space Shuttle. I have owned two Space Shuttles. I remember mm-hmm. playing Space Shuttle when it came out also, you know. And I and I know what everybody says. It's safe, you know, pinball. It had a good run at, at Williams. It did some good numbers. It had some cool stuff. And people love Space Shuttle. But one of the things that Bear, uh, Steve and I and always, everybody always talked about is when the balls are in the lock, you hit it and you can't do much with it. So we were right. we were looking at this because we had two physical locks on the play field that are going to lock balls. Is there a way we can do stuff? And we, we started remin- you know, talking about it. And then Ryan McQuaid, yeah. who jumped in and here, said, hey, we can turn them into where they can roll back and roll forward. And that's mm-hmm. when Bash Lock pretty much got enveloped. It was it was really quick. Uh, Ryan worked on the whitewood, made a prototype to show the ball rolling back and rescoring, rolling right. back and rescoring. And then more importantly, that you couldn't Dracula shape the lock. Like you right. can't shape the game and the ball will move and count. That was one of the first things I checked. And right. once I saw that, I'm like, oh, okay. I give my blessing, yes. <laughs> Okay, because this is, I want people to, to see if we can hit this, see if we can score it, see if they can hit it out, we can score them for that, put it back in, we can score them for that. Things like, things like that started to form after the proof of concept worked, and Ryan McQuaid was big on that, so. Yep, and he, did, he just kept championing that with uh, Dennis, working through Whitewood revisions, Whitewood revisions, to, so, to the point where we got the manufacturer, the playfields, to be able to replicate that lock feature every time and it just came out it worked out great and then we made rules for it and it's funny because we talked about calling it smash saucers but it was kind of a thing and then we said well why don't you just call it bash locks and then that just took off and it just stayed with it so we've called it bash locks ever since so 
it's kind of fun, you know? So um, looking at the timeline, because you said that Barry hired in on August of 21, and you guys announced in January of 22, and then sadly he passed away a month after you guys announced that. Um, he did that, so he essentially did this play field in about six months or less. Yep. And you said you were known for just making... That's Barry's timeline. He was always mm -hmm. known at Williams and everybody to start something in six months. And it's funny, um, he had already started working on another game, which I don't to see the late day because right. he only had a concept, which was as crazy as this is going to sound. And Steve, I know what it is, yeah, of course. It was we, we were talking, he was talking to me about this too. I mean, this was going to be the second one. <laughs> it was going to be called American Pinball. Yeah. Factory. Fact, yeah. Parts and service. <laughs> Parts and service. <laughs> Mm -hmm. you, actually take the, you have to shoot the ball around and get the pinball machine made, put it in a box and get it to the, the dock door so the truck can pick it up. Yep. It's crazy. It's, it's, well, it's, I have this. I have initial notes on that, which I have never touched. But they're just there. Because, like, yeah, that's that's in addition to this game. We were talking about that, too. So it was, again, it, we were, it was basically going to be, yeah, Barry's coming here. I was going to be with Barry. And we were just going to be like a tag team, really, uh, yeah. doing Barry-style games. I love his games. So that's and, cool. <laughs> and, and and Steve and Barry worked together in Baltimore mm -hmm. beforehand and they, they were excited about some of the stuff they were bringing out. And then that never got to see the light of the day. So when this came about, I was like, we have to give the, you know, Steve Steve was the first one in the my corner saying, Yes, let's bring this game out, let's, let's dedicate it to Barry. And I said, You remember everything? He goes, Yep, I know what everything I know everything <laughs> So, so like, we're running through our writing it down. I have a plan. I have a, I have, I have a plan to work out, which became like first it became a multifaceted plan, and it finally got melted down to one coherent plan because that was a bit of time before that happened. As I was trying to work out how to make this one coherent theme while also making it a very game, you know. So there's a bit of marrying has to go around on there to, to, to make that work. But yeah, once we had that, then we were we were basically running. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I, am, I am I am pleased with it, with, with what has come out, but there's still more updates to come. Oh, on absolutely. this game, a lot. There's a lot that's not in here. There's a lot of rules that aren't in here. And, and assets. So, yeah, a lot, a lot assets. of assets not in here yet. That will be in so. I'm I'm I am hoping that once this. You're saying it, not yet, not yet. Yeah, oh, definitely not yet. I have a plan, so yeah. I can I can okay. look at my. Not, we're we're still build, developing it. We we've had okay. three. And there are more coming. Okay. And uh, so for everybody else to know, when we were in Texas, if you didn't catch it at the Texas seminar, Texas also had the new beta version of Galactic Tank Force code. Out. So very shortly, that beta code will be available for everybody. We had it at the show, testing it, and it played flawless. So we were very excited about that, too. Remember, we're a small company. There's Steve, yep. Casey, Joe. Ryan, myself, yeah, yeah. Ryan. Ryan. Yeah, Jack, Jessica on animation. Yeah. Jessica, <laughs> Bobby. Yeah. I mean, Natasha. 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 I love his car. Like his, 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 his car artwork, <laughs> right? That, yeah, that, I love those, and so I wanted it, and so that's, so, that's what you're seeing. That, so a I, little okay, issue. I, I like the barbecue guys at the bottom. They, they definitely look straight you know, out of a barbecue thing. The the yeah. Burton brothers? Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Burton brothers, that's right. Yep. That's absolutely. Oh, Burton mm -hmm. brothers. It's the Burton brothers. But, but understand that Dan Hughes also worked at WMS. He also worked at Williams. He did artwork for, I want to say, Indianapolis 500. He did work at Elvin G. He knew Barry. Okay? Mm -hmm. He knew Barry, the prankster that he was, and was excited to work on this game with Barry. Okay? And then when Barry passed, he was like, well, we have to definitely do something. And he, he did the back class, and he did everything else that we've seen on this, on this play field. So, pretty cool. Okay, the, now there is something that I, 
I would like to give you the opportunity to discuss because there have been some rumors floating around or allegations that, sure. um, you know, that Barry O's estate was not included in the original plans uh, for this game. Now, th that's what that's what some people have speculated on on other podcasts. And so I just figured this would be an easy way of asking you directly. Was you there a, were they always involved in, yes. in the in the plan? Yep. From day one, that, that's why I said that in the beginning with the contract, when I wrote that up with the contract with Barry in mind, and his wife knew about it too. And uh, listen, Kathy has been great. She has been patiently watching. We have sent her updates on the game. She knows what it was coming. She couldn't wait to see it. We put some hidden stuff in there for the tributes, which she absolutely broke down and started crying and loved. But uh, we, we, kept, we kept her apprised through the whole process of this. And she was very excited about it. So, you know, some podcasts would also say that I'm dead or that I'm dying or I've, you know, fallen and got hit by a truck. I don't believe everything you hear on some podcasts. You know, listen to what comes straight from the manufacturer themselves. We want to tell you that something's coming on. We'll tell you, okay? And uh, that's why we've, we've killed a lot of rumors that for some reason there's always a rumor about me, uh, you know, and my earthly demise. So, so there you go. Um, so, well, not true. And, and okay. by the way, uh, some podcasters uh, might say one thing, but like you said, uh, Zach, Manny, and Nicole, they have ordered barbecue games. So, yes, you can buy games through Zach, Manny, and flip it out because they have already ordered them. Okay. I would say I'm, I'm glad also, uh, Bowden, that you've pointed some of the stuff out about Barracora and um, the space shuttle stuff on the left side. Because one thing we have for two is this is just like a replica of Hot Wheels. But if you look closely at this, I mean, it's I, I love that not only are you like showing Barry O in the artwork, but you're also doing it through the games that he made as well. Mm -hmm. And so and you pick out another one, pick out another one that's on the play field. Uh, you got, you got, I told you Barracora, I gave you that one. Space Show, Space Station, obvious. How about that right ramp? I'll give you that. What's the right ramp again? What is that? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to zoom in on. What do you see on the right rim? I see the spatula, which is kind of, the, which is cool oh, the way yeah, that you guys can see. Keep looking at the spatula. What's that look like? What, what, what are those inserts? What do they say? The inserts you say, you know, play filled. Uh -huh. Sorry, I, I can't zoom in that close on it. <laughs> okay, well, I'll tell you what they are. Okay, so you have the six inserts and they say 1.5x, 2x, 2.5x, 3x, 3.5x, and 4x. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What game, what Barry game does that? Oh, exactly. Of course you're going like to put, yeah. put me on the spot like this. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no, I, 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 I'm waving the flag. I'm waving the flag. I, I'm it, not the is rules it guy. Is it Dracula that does that? You have the answer and you're yelling at your, at your podcasting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah is it Dracula that does it? You know what? They just might have to get into a TARDIS at some point. And yeah. said that. And now you gave it away. Now you gave it away. But there's things like that. Yeah. So yeah, a little, little, little bit of. I mean, there's even stuff. So it's always to see if they figured it out after I gave them that clue. Well, doc, Doctor Who is the target. Yeah, yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't say it. I said they got to yeah. get their time machine and go back. Okay, I know what a TARDIS is. Okay, <laughs> I mean, time and relative dimensions and stuff. Okay, yeah, I don't know what it stands for, but I know what uh, <laughs> what franchise it is. I mean, it, it's the blue oh, phone booth that takes you everywhere. Yeah. But, but it is fun to see people find that like organically because yeah. that's yeah. the reason why I did it like that is for people. To okay. Do Ah, and then other people can just play a fun game, you know, they don't yeah. know. But people who know, okay. Go, ah, okay, yeah, yeah. Now, now talk about the screen in the middle, okay? Mm -hmm. Because th th there are challenges with having screens in the middle of a play field. So talk about the incorporation, talk about the decision of putting that in there, and talk about how it's incorporated into the game. Remember, the screen in the mirror. The screen in the middle is not mirrored, so that's very important. That's very important. That was very important that we didn't do that because and I needed to have more information in your face than I wanted. And um, if you've played the game, you'll see the two big numbers there. There's a reason why they are always in your face, looking at you, because it's sort of like a, 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 a constant risk reward system there that's it's always in your face, uh, <laughs> along with the quick 
along with the quick reference to certain things that are in the upper uh, screen, like the, the meter, like the, the sauce, and all that as well. But I wanted, I wanted to make sure that this was also a, co a convenient place to look at information where you're not looking up as much. Because, you know, it's, it's, so on a fast game like this, it's hard to, mm -hmm. it's hard to do that. So I want to put the, the very important information, the very, the, the, it's, basically it's business time down there on the screen. It's part, and it's party time in the back, really. Right, and mostly the player's screen. So it's right. giving you all the player's information. Like your, play, your score is always there. Like the current player's score is always mm -hmm. the problem sitting there. So everyone else's is up there. But your player's score is down there. Once you start a mode, there'll be tool tips up there, or you know, pro tips like shoot this many, whatever. So and it'll, it'll have the score running down, so you always know what you're scoring. That was one thing. Another thing that was important to me is to try to make the scoring as transparent as I could. Um, like you know, sometimes you shoot shots and the shots were three million four hundred seventy-three thousand. Right. You have no idea why. I wanted to be able to show you why that shot was worth three point five million because you just saw it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. So I'm mostly there. There's some. There's a, there's one thing that I want to work on that's not as transparent, but I'm working on. It. <laughs> but uh, that, okay. that, that, the, the mini screen helps with that too. It help. It helps with that too. So and I and I've heard people appreciate the mini screen. Um. So and as far as like you know being a convenient place to look and everything, but uh, and uh. But, I got a big guess. Yeah. But, so, but it was great talking to you. Steve's gonna stick around. Yeah, I'm gonna be here. So I'll catch you guys later. Yeah. Okay, oh, thank you, awesome. David. Go, Steve. All right. So, uh, so back back to the screen. So yeah. So um, one of the one of my goals in this in this with this game is to really make it a like a, a quick fire turn to game too. So so if you it's, it's, it's sort of in the way of the, why are those two numbers are there? Why are they always in your face? Once you learn why they're there, and it's, it's sort of a let's make a deal, you know, you want to keep pressing your luck sort of thing with that system. So, um, so I mean, I, I am I'm glad we have it there. I'm, I'm hoping people will be able to use it in a way that will help them play better. Um, especially since in a, it's in a view that you're kind of looking in that area most of the time anyway, you know. So, yeah. So one question I have looking over these pictures and whatnot is that you guys have spinners on the ramps. Mm -hmm. uh, what's kind of the logic behind that? And uh, what are, is there something special that we need to accomplish with them? Do you have special rules that you're going to have oh, yeah. set up for them? Oh, yeah. Well, the spinners on the ramps is that, well, I like, I like, well, I mean, spinners are great in general, but I like that yes. spinners on the ramps on a repeating shot so that you can, like, if you can keep repeating the shot, you can keep spinning the spinners. It offers okay. that. Because usually when you shoot a spinner, the ball's somewhere else, and so you yeah. can't get it back and get more spinners. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? But yeah. but uh, the thing with this game is, yeah, you can repeat the spinner if you keep hitting the ramps. But the ramps, the, the left ramp is easier than the right one. The right ramp is okay. easier. It's a little bit more difficult, but that's why I'm paying you to play field X on it. Okay, <laughs> so that's what balances that out. The spinners themselves are are uh, in charge of. Keeping track of how much of how, how much you've, you've been working on your uh, secret sauce. Okay, so go back to the narrative of the game, right? You also as the challenger, um, I've been working on like the, the the barbecue challenge. They have their sauces they give you at the competition, but you always have mm -hmm. yours. So if you get your if you build up your sauce to 100 percent, basically you have activated your sauce. Your sauce is automatically better than theirs, so that will give you a better rating when you win the challenge. So it's sort of as you're shooting the spinners, as you're shooting the ramps and the other things, if you make sure to build that meter up to max and have your sauce, that means you're going to get a better trophy for doing that. So a lot of, one, one of the things I want to be sure to do with this game is that, yes, you can play the game straight through and just bum rush it through, and you won't score as much. But if you care, you will be rewarded. <laughs> it's basically like that. Okay. Okay. You know, so it sounds like a, a speed run. Okay. This is not like if you speed run the game, you can get to the end, but you're not going to maximize a lot of points. So you need to actually course. build. Yeah. Yeah. Nine yeah. Like, yeah. But so yeah, you, like, you, you example, have to construct the modes and go through them. Right. Yeah. Like for example, just the, 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 the basic, the basic cook off the foundation of the game. All cooking is orange shots. Orange shots is always cooking. Orange, orange, orange. Right. If you could just okay. shoot, you could just shoot the orange shots for level one, go into the saucer that says orange, and you're done. 
but you didn't really do anything. <laughs> okay. okay. So you might leave that with seven, eight million, maybe. Mm-hmm. But if you remember to spin up your sauce to 100 percent, that upgrades your trophy. If you remember to get some side orders at the drop targets, make your macaroni and cheese and your coleslaw while you're cooking. Show your multitasking abilities. Shoot those, shoot those drop targets. I'm paying you for that because if you shoot those drop targets, you might drain from them. So I'm going to pay you for that. You remember to do those. And the more the, 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 the most difficult part of it, if you can get your meter correct, if you can get your flavor at the right level that the judges want, that gives you another level. So the okay. perfect doing all of those things and then winning, then that gives you the biggest multiplier. So, so, so does this game have, have like to a... do that? You don't have to do that. You just don't. You, yeah. you just won't make this money. So, so that, does this game that, have an the ending game. then? Like, yeah. Say like once you finish, like, does it like end the game if you if you get to the end? Now, if if I say right now the uh, Barry's final is being worked on, so it's going to loop to the next uh, t- contestant so that you can light your locks. You know, so okay. like you, you have to you have to win a cook off to light the lock. So. There's not, there's not a hard end yet. That's one of the updates we have to go through. <laughs> okay, so, mm-hmm. but uh, the the wizard mode you face will be based on your performance. It's not, I don't want to say any more about that yet because it's not in the game okay. at this particular version. But it will be. <laughs> it, mm-hmm. it will be. So, depending on what you do during the main competitions and depending on what wizard mode you face, and that's all I'm going there. <laughs> right? One is a Barry tribute. Mm-hmm. Uh, for a specific reason, uh, so one of them is that. But uh, yeah, so but that's just the cook-off part. Then you have the mode part. You know, you do certain modes, you get certain perks for doing certain modes. You know, like I'll give you one. If you do a mission mode, a mission involves the barbecue pit targets. You know, those six targets there, right? Okay. If you finish it, you get the ability where you hit a barbecue pit target and you get spotted another one. So it making it easier to finish for the rest of that ball. Don't okay. drain the loot, all right? But that's another game. We already mentioned this game, but that's another callback to which game? Doctor Who, Doctor One, yeah. and Doctor Four. Both of those did that, where you hit a target and it gave you another one. So, so you can use that to get some barbecue pit targets and get more awards really quickly. But they're very dangerous, so don't drain and whatever. Blah blah. blah. You know, gameplay, gameplay. Game. You know, so that's that's just one of the perks. There are other perks like rants are worth more and orbits are worth more and what what else? Um, yeah, sauces are worth more and things like that. So there are lots of things that you can build a play field. You can sort of build like a godlike play field if you last long enough, but don't drain because it's gone. <laughs> you know, so so mm-hmm. that could be one way to come back from somebody who's gotten hundreds of billions. It should just do a few modes, get a play field X, and then you're good. That's another. That's another thing I'm hoping to see is that I want to see from uh, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of games. Is there a part of the rule set that's, of course, broken to where if you go too far, you can't catch up? From I think I have multiple right. things that balance that out, but I want to make sure of that. And if not, then that's just numbers. I can do things. But but uh, it's it's fun to see someone like finish a cook off and get like 200 million, and they like, yeah. man, I think that's unbalanced. Well, no, because you hit this many food shots, and then you did the sauce, and then you did both side orders, and then you got the meter perfectly correct, and you did it in 50 seconds, so you get a time bonus, and you got a plane for that. I have to pay you for all of that. Right? It's like pay that to get these money. That's what that is, right? So I got it. So yeah, you earned that. I know. Good, legal, good, good job. <laughs> There's a reason why you got 200 and he got 40. Yeah. Okay. So, so the, there are other games that have been introducing like challenge modes or a, a kind of a warp zone mode where they can warp to a certain part of the game to do, you know, a mini, mini wizard mode or something like that. Or a co-op, you know, like two on two or one on three or something like that. Are you considering doing anything like that in this game? Well, I'm sure we get, we get to a point where you consider our putting our team play in there. I mean, that's just putting team play in. Like, yeah. So, <laughs> so I mean, I, I don't want to say officially, but of course, our other games have team play. Why not? Um, is there something that warps you up something? 
Yeah, not now. It will be. <laughs> I'll refer back to the, to, to the statement of it will depend on how well you do, which wizard mode you see. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. again, since I don't want to comment on things that are not officially in this version, but they are in the plan. And so we'll see, you know, what, what happens there. <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you want to. I'm kind of prattling on about rules because that's what I do. I mean, being, being, being privileged enough to be like, you know, co designer with Barry and having to, being able to put my rules in a Barry game already geeks me out crazily. But just so, yeah. so forgive me if I'm rattling on. Well, you're good. You are good, Steve. Like, we, we appreciate you talking about this stuff. Yeah. You know, one one thing, like I said, Barry has a ton of games. Gorgar. He designed oh, yeah. Barracor, like you yeah. talked about. Joust, like the legendary Joust, but not Taxi, Travis Murray. No, nope, not <laughs> Taxi, not Tiger. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but how many games? So you've alluded to like at least four of Barry's games that have been referenced in this game. Can you kind of give us a rough idea how many of his games yes, are I can, give you the, I can give you the answer. The answer is 11. Nice. Arguably twelve, but I'm not really like it's two. It's a two and one, so I'm saying eleven. You know, <laughs> okay. because you, you, you know, I don't want to say because the twelve is kind of a stretch, but because it, it kind of it's the same idea, but across multiple Barry games, so it's kind of one. So uh, at at uh, Texas Football Festival, I had I I brought up a um, a spreadsheet and I hid all eleven in there and had been trying to guess which ones they were. And they got nine of them. So, you know, with some clues. Oh, wow. They got nine of them. I, I, I gave them some clues, of course. But, yeah. So, there would be 11 because, like, there's one. There, there are others that are not on the play field. Like, you have to play the game to find one. Um, I alluded to one, which will depend on how far you, how well you do in the game. So, that's not going to be on the play field. That's in the rules. Um, so, uh, I don't know if I want to. Well, I think it might be fun just to, 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 to talk about this one. Okay, I'll give I'll give, I'll give one more because it'll be it'll be a little bit obvious to people who play it, maybe. Okay, so we're talking about the whole mini screen thing, right? And the mini screen yeah, okay. has, has the recipe value and the multi ball jackpot always sitting there in your face. It's the base screen. Okay. If nothing else is happening, like a mode or whatever, it's those two big numbers looking at you, right? Always asking if you're gonna go for it now or now. Right. So basically, <laughs> okay. what it's doing is that you're building value in that multiple jackpot with your recipe values on every shot. Every shot you make to cook your food for the barbecue contest, you're adding value to that to that multiple jackpot, right? So it's that number, that multiple jackpot, that you take into the multiple. It's your decision when you start it. That is your base value. Okay. So if you start at two million. And I come up after you, and I'm like, no, wait, I'm going to try to start it at two and a half million because my number is going to be better. And that's the base value. It's going to go up from there. Like it's, it's just sort of like ascending. If you've seen the game, like you've seen this little bit of a who wants to be a millionaire ladder going up, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it starts at whatever that base number is, right? And that's under your control. Like, don't drain it or else you lose something. You know, it's a classic risk reward stuff that should be engaged. Right, um, but it's about that number and how well you've been cooking your food, right, <laughs> without draining, and and you can decide when you're gonna start your journey up the ladder, and it's that number that starts counting up that ladder, and that ladder, the way the ladder works, is a reference to a very game, um, <laughs> oh, so, and how and how it works is a reference, rules wise, to a very game. It's one of my favorite multi balls ever. Um, so I'll, I don't want to go any further. We want to leave it as a spoiler for people to figure it out. But you know, so it, it is. It is. It is a. Uh, it is a reference directly to to a very. It's just that you instead, okay. instead of instead of accepting the values that this multi ball gives you, it's whatever you put in. It's whatever what you bring okay. to the table. So so if I bring in five billion. And you come up and say, nah, -uh, I've got 3.5 million in my multiple. I'm going to try to work up to 6 million. Okay, let's go. Don't die, by the way. Don't drain. Don't get nothing. 
What? <laughs> Make sure you actually start to multi fall so that you can start <laughs> going up the ladder and trying to take me down. So, um, yeah, but that, but that, but that would be an example of a very game that's not on the play field. Too. Okay. So how many? Uh, so how many modes are in the game, and how many are planned anyway? And how many multiple uh, multi balls are planned for the game? All right. So there are nine modes in there. I'm trying to get on that little Octothorpe on the bottom there. There's mm-hmm. a reason why the Octothorpe is there. I mean, you know, there's a reason why it looks like that. Um, and then you have the sub wizard mode, which is being worked on, which will happen at halftime. That's a multi ball. You have the get back to multi ball. It's the main multi ball. You have the side dish multi ball, which is uh, what the drop target is. Uh, you have the wizard mode, depending on which one you get. Uh, um, what else? Uh, what other modes? Well, there's other ones that are planned that I don't want to promise, but would make sense. Like, you know, if okay. I ask a question, hey, there's nine modes. What happens if you beat all nine modes? You know, mm-hmm. right? so it's just leading is like a leading the witness type question, you know, right? Sure. So that would be one, but you know, but the but say the reason why you have that octopus on the bottom is like, well, what if I beat these three modes? What, mm-hmm. you know, what if I beat these three modes? What happens? You know, right? So what if I beat these eight modes in this particular way? Then you know, so those would be most. Those would be like perks and stuff, but more of the tournament aspect of it when we get to it. So you get that's more of the level two. Like once you get used to the level one stuff of beating a mode, it's like, you know what? I'm gonna try and go after the left column specifically for a reason. <laughs> it's like, no, nah, I'm gonna go after the right column, or I'm going after the the middle for a reason. So yeah. So you can you can, so I'm looking forward to some people putting together some craziness where they get some like triple double four X super and they think it's an exploit and I'm going like nope allow it it's it's correct pay the money you, you you did everything right and you didn't train I have to pay you that is correct you have won the barbecue contest well done sir well done sir <laughs> <laughs> you have done it so. So I'm, I've done the math kind of. So if you guys started this in August of 2021 and it's finally showing in February of 2024, it's roughly about 30 months from, from start to finish. Was this kind of pushed around in production schedule because of uh, Barry's untimely passing or was this kind of just always the game plan? Was this game never supposed to come to fruition? Like it oh, just seems like there's a lot of time. I was doing this game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're like, this is it. I'm doing it. <laughs> okay. But we're working on stuff like i'm here hey steve go work with bahala now let's make this better yeah. oh okay uh, hey let go let's we need galactic tank okay good do galactic tank okay help work with that okay good yeah okay good good you know and while i'm doing that by the way i have pages and pages of rules and writings and working with barry and stuff also so you can do more than one thing it just yeah that things take time so, yeah, oh yeah definitely things definitely take time and yeah. you know, and, and it just it's and now was a good time. So yeah, I mean, yeah. In, in between working on this and updating, updating and testing Galactic, updating and testing uh, Legends of Valhalla, getting getting some more tournament level coding in there with Frank, who did a great job there working with him. So it's just activity. I mean, things take oh, yeah. time. I mean, I don't know the exact. You're right yourself to the bone. Working with when what, but I've been here all the time. You know, all, you know, all the stuff about timelines and drama and rumors and all this stuff, I've, I've been awakened to all that recently. I'm like, what? Okay, I just wanted to, <laughs> I just wanted to make a great game that Barry and I were working on. That's all I was just yeah. like, what's happening here? What is this? <laughs> You're making the... Honestly, looking at this game, you're making the other designers jealous because this is quite the tribute to Barry. This is this is a really I'm cool hoping, you know, way I, to honor I didn't him. Make, yeah. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to make them jealous because I'm, mean, you know, I'm a super rookie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I, I was trying, was trying to learn the best he can from from Barry, you know, and and uh, and all that. But uh, yeah, once I got that point, I was like, okay, what can I do? 
how how can I pull this off? How can I get everyone on board? And everyone was on board, you know. It's like, of course, it's Barry, you know. Everything. How can I get as much Barryness in here? But yet, not too obvious, you know. Like it's, not, yeah. it's like it's not like you have to work through it in order to see. Oh, this this is like, if you don't know space shuttle, yes, the space shuttle is in the yard, but there's a reason why the space shuttle is in the yard. That's the sport. Yeah, right next to the spicy sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason that. why it's there is yeah. pointing to the space shuttle drop targets. But if you don't know, it's like, okay, why is the space shuttle there? <laughs> well, you'll find out. If you're good enough, you'll find out. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but the people, Go to the what, barbecue the challenge on the moon, moon, maybe? Yeah, maybe. I mean, where, I mean, where are we going in this multi-ball? I mean, we're going up this ladder. I don't know. Where are we going? <laughs> I mean, where are we? Uh, but um, yeah, so I, I I'm glad I'm I'm glad it has and it's come out this way. I'm glad it looks the way it does. I mean, it looks great. I'm glad that things came together. Um, as far as you know, rules integration and design. I'm glad I was able to represent Barry in this way. And yeah, I don't know what else to say. Otherwise, I'll just keep saying stuff because I'm just very happy that it has come out and American Pinball, you know, did it. The team and everybody was working with with. With, with me doing this and, and pulling this off. I mean, that's, I mean, that's, yeah. <laughs> I'm just, yeah. I'm, just, I'm, hey. just very, I'm just very excited and appreciative and grateful, really. <laughs> and, and, just, and just grateful that this happened and that it's out and people can play it. And so now I can get, you know, criticism, positive, negative, which I'm looking forward to to see, okay, because that's how you learn, you know, okay. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. I'm learning what, what, how the game is not doing a good job teaching the player. You know, I'm gonna work on that. You know, learning how to, how things are good, things are not. You know, people aren't able to see this yet. People are seeing this. Okay, right. People aren't going for this in the way I think they would. So this part of part of the things that I was looking forward to is this process. You know, it's like yes, it's out. So now I can see. Okay, what's good? What's not? Let's see it. All right. So. Okay, tell me about the different editions and why should someone consider buying the limited edition and what what's the target audience for the standard edition. Right, well, why is there only a hundred one? Well, I'm not a salesman, so I'll do my best. Sure, uh, sure, but you, <laughs> you can you can at least fill us in. Yeah, um, I know that the uh, limited edition has the has the uh, side lighting. I would call it the oral lighting, whatever marketing term we're using for it. But you know, I like I like I like that lighting because it's, it's from Galactic Tank Force, right? And uh, and so it makes the game look good too. And we get to use some of the lighting there to sync up with uh, light animations and stuff. That's really cool. Um, I think the, the limited has this, has the has the plate on it. You know, it's limited to 100. It is limited to 100. It is limited to 100. Okay. <laughs> nice. Okay. Right. So, so it's so it's really limited. It's, it's not like a 5,000 limited. That's what they told me. That's what everyone has told me. I'm like, good. Okay, good. Thank you. Just it's whatever the number yes. is. Just okay. Just, all right. Um, what what else is on the uh, the limited? Um, uh, let's see, said that we said that. Let's see, the, the powder coated legs or something. I'm forgetting some stuff. It's on there. It's on. It's, there's a sheet. Okay, so, okay. Okay, Steve, I got you covered here. Okay, it has the red powder coated side armor. Yeah. It has the new Aura lighting system pre installed. It has the magic glass. It has a shaker motor. It has a knocker. It has a limited. Uh, BBQ cooking apron and a limited edition plaque. So mm-hmm. that's what it is. Mm-hmm. The classic edition. So, and that's at 8,495. The classic wow. ed- edition is 6,995. And uh, obviously it has all the same gameplay, I'm yeah. assuming. Everything, everything. Yeah, the gameplay is the same, 100%. That must, that must yeah. be the thing. That, I can't have it. Yeah. I can't, I can't well, not do I, that. Okay. okay, but that's actually not but like for fifteen hundred dollars. Like you're get if you want to upgrade to the limited, you're getting powder coating. Which, by the way, if you do it after, it's about three hundred bucks. A shaker motor, you're already looking at a couple hundred bucks. A knocker, if you put that in afterwards. Magic glass and the R assistant. So you're basically just paying for the upgrades, but really you're getting them all at a reasonable price. I actually hope so because that was also part of my, my goal. I mean, you know, one of the goals is to, one of my goals is to make it, you know, a game that many people can play. And so it being affordable, 
as, or as affordable as we can make it helps with that. <laughs> you know? So I know, yeah, when you're a designer, you're supposed to over design and let them cut stuff or whatever. And so then, <laughs> I don't want to prevent people from playing this. I mean, I hope, I hope this shows up in a lot of routes. I hope it shows up in a lot of barbecue places. You know, let's let's, let's get them. Let's, let's get them in some huge barbecue places like the Hard Eight. I went to the Hard Eight at Texas finally. Thank you. Finally, oh, yes. I was able to go to the Hard Eight. Everybody talks about the yes. Hard Eight. Yeah, that's the reason why everybody talks about the Hard Eight. I, yeah, it's I, it's good. Yeah, I believe. So yeah, let's let's get one at, at the Hard Eight. Let's get one at all these barbecue places around here. Let's. I want to see them in San Antonio on my old stomping grounds, and I was working for Baltimore. You know, yeah, I'm I'm really I'm really hoping it's um, easy to buy, easy to route, easy to maintain, and all that stuff. That's that I hope will, will help. So one question I had too is is this is Barrios running the same? Board set and stuff that Galactic Tank Force and the other. It's the new set. Yeah. It's, it's the new board set. Yeah, the new board set. Yeah, it's that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It is that. Yes. Awesome. Okay. Wh- wh- where's it, where are the next places you guys are going? What shows are you guys going to be at? So if people want to drop by and yeah. say hi. We got Midwest Gaming Classic. I know I'm going there. We got a seminar there. Um, I'm definitely going there because the tournament's there. So I've got to go to the, go to the, the Midwest Championship there. Uh, let's see. Uh, Pim Brewery game will be there. The game will be at Fantastic. Definitely going up. Fantastic, Fantastic is, is a third circuit event. So you know I'm going there for that tournament. But uh, yeah, we'll be doing a similar there. Me and Ren Ryan will be there for that. Um, what else? If you guess nothing else on this board that I know. But I think it's somehow right outside this door. You'll probably look at it and see where they are. But I know, I know about Midwest Game Classic, Pembroke, and Fantastic. I know about those um, because there are literal like markings on this board as to like how many games are going there. <laughs> I'm just looking mm-hmm. over there at them. So, so I know, so I know about that. But we'll, we'll definitely be at Midwest. Looking forward to that. You know, and I will definitely be a fantastic looking forward to that, especially going back east. You know, see, see what some, some of my boys have seen since last year. You know, some of the New England boys back there, you know, love to get some, some of the New York boys coming over. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm assuming it's going to be at Expo because we're, oh, yeah. we're, yeah. we're hoping to come to Expo. Yeah, so. Expo, Expo, Expo. Of course, 40th anniversary. Yeah, the big, the big, the big hullabaloo, the big shindig, the big 40th anniversary. All the tours, all the majesty, all the the the, the pomp and the circumstance, and, uh, and all and the barbecue. Yes, we will have mm-hmm. that. Yes, so, definitely. So the question everyone wants to know—I don't know if you can answer this or not—but how do I get my hands on these sweet burial barbecue challenge aprons? Like, is this? It, it says limited edition. As I don't know far if it's as like I got know, the answer is order a limited edition, but. Yeah. That's as far as I know, but I mean, if Dave were here, maybe he may be able to provide a more complete answer to that. But as far as I've been told, it's like that they're going to the limited edition. <laughs> so, okay, but you're also wearing a pretty sweet hat. Uh, that's a pretty sweet hat that you have on. Swag. Finally, let's get some swag. Finally, very good shirt. Finally. Oh, you got a shirt too. Oh, Look at that. Oh, yeah. Mario's Barbecue Challenge shirt, right? On the store, awesome. $20. Size small with yeah. 3XL. I'm surprised I remember nice. that from the day. I, just... I think the logo should be lower though. So on your belly, on my belly, it <laughs> so expands many... as you eat. So when it looks yeah. like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're getting, we're getting our hats going. We're getting our shirts going. It'll be on, on the site, AmericanPitball.com. Look out for that. If it's not already posted already. Um, you know, we've been having some, you know, very uh, recent meetings about getting those on there and getting them on there and circulating everything. So, yeah, these will be these will be available. And uh, yeah, love the shirt. <laughs> I will wear it too much. So I will wear it too many times. You know, other other people other people saw uh, in Texas saw saw a few of us in my Galactic Tank Force hoodies and stuff. That that was another. T- Shout out! We got called a call on people. Were like, yeah, we like we love those Galactic Tank Force hoodies. You know, those gonna be in for sale, and they may be. You know, so there was a lot of saying, look out for look out for the site for for, for uh, some Galactic Tank Force stuff as well. So yeah, they love those hoodies. But yeah, for us the for us the yes, hat shirt will be sold. Shirts already posted, I think, for for twenty dollars, small to three X. Nice, awesome. 
Well, Stephen, we thank you for coming on. Uh, if someone wants to get a hold of you, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Uh, I am funwithbonus at gmail.com. You can, you can email me there. I'll, you know, if I get it amongst all the spam. <laughs> but, but I am fun with bonus on most uh, internet platforms, um, especially Facebook and Instagram and and Twitter X. People use Twitter X anymore, whatever. <laughs> you know? uh, so yeah, so I am funwithbonus.com. You know, visit the site. I need to I need to post some more there, but I just haven't had a lot of time. So I use the Facebook a lot, the Instagram to help you out from there. But awesome. That's me. And uh, <laughs> see you at the show. See you at the show. Come up soon. We'll talk barbecue and and uh, yeah. Fun. Great, Sounds great good. Guys. Thank you so much for having me on. I mean, I'm like, so excited. Sure. How excited I get to talk about this game. It's like it's because I you understand. <laughs> I am so grateful that this happened. I am so so happy and and, and grateful that this happened. And, I don't know what else to say. I'm going to just keep rambling because I just have to see someone play and having fun on it and everything, you know? Well, we're looking forward to checking out in person. Uh, we, we couldn't make it to Texas, but we're definitely making it to Expo. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, definitely looking forward to feedback. Anybody who's played it, uh, yes, certainly I want all, uh, I want send all it the in. feedback. And as long as it's constructive, I want all the feedback, please, because that is, that's, how we learn. <laughs> that's how we learn. We learn through feedback. And yep. that's, we're, we're, Received feedback already, and so we're working on it. So, oh, there's, a, nice. there's a bunch of stuff that, uh, that's going in right now because of feedback. So <laughs> look out for further updates. So. And speaking of swag, if you want to get Loser Kid swag, go to silverballswag.com slash loser kid. We have shirts. We want to thank Steven Strom. We, Scott saw him over the weekend, and he was sporting our new Loser Kid Attacks pinball shirt. Yeah, the atta- the I mean the Loser Kid from Mars pinball shirt. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, that one. <laughs> and if you want to get a hold of us, we are Loser Kid Pinball Podcast at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, X, or Twitter, whatever floats your boat there. Uh, we're also on YouTube, ta-da, and on uh, Twitch. Hit up, subscribe, like, do all the fancy little things. Even comment. We're getting plenty of comments. I appreciate everyone that's uh, commenting even mm-hmm. on episodes from like a year and a half ago. Like, <laughs> why is there no gameplay footage to Pulp Fiction here? Well, this yeah. was an interview that they released like <laughs> yeah. before the game was yeah, any, <laughs> whatever. But uh, thanks again. And, uh, and Scott, if you want to watch our beautiful faces, you can uh, look at YouTube. And I, okay, my parting thought is I'm hungry now. I want to go get some barbecue. Me too. Oh, that's where I'm going. There's a place around here called Big Eddie's near here. Ooh. And I think I'm going there on the way home. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah, right, thanks, Steve. On. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much.